Chapters 5 through 9 of the Gospel according to John. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Gospel according to John from the New Testament in Modern Speech. Translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 5 through 9. CHAPTER Five. After this there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, called in Hebrew Bethesda. It has five arcades. In these there used to lie a great number of sick persons, and of people who were blind, or lame, or paralyzed. And there was one man there who had been an invalid for thirty-eight years. Jesus saw him lying there, and knowing that he had been a long time in that condition, he asked him, Do you wish to have health and strength? Sir, replied the sufferer, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is moved. But while I am coming, someone else steps down before me. Rise, said Jesus, take up your mat and walk. Instantly the man was restored to perfect health, and he took up his mat and began to walk. That day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath! You must not carry your mat! He who cured me, he replied, said to me, Take up your mat and walk. Who is it, they asked, that said to you, Take up your mat and walk? But the man who had been cured did not know who it was, for Jesus had passed out unnoticed, there being a crowd in the place. Afterwards Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, You are now restored to health. Do not sin any more, or a worse thing may befall you. The man went and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had restored him to health, and on this account the Jews began to persecute Jesus, because he did these things on the Sabbath. His reply to their accusation was, My father works unceasingly, and so do I. On this account, then, the Jews were all the more eager to put him to death, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also spoke of God as being in a special sense his father, thus putting himself on a level with God. In most solemn truth I tell you, replied Jesus, that the Son can do nothing of himself. He can only do what he sees the Father doing, for whatever he does, that the Son does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son, and reveals to him all that he himself is doing, and greater deeds than these will he reveal to him, in order that you may wonder. For just as the Father awakens the dead and gives them life, so the Son also gives life to whom he wills. The Father indeed does not judge any one, but he has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. The man who withholds honor from the Son withholds honor from the Father who sent him. In most solemn truth I tell you that he who listens to my teaching, and believes him who sent me, has the life of the ages, and does not come under judgment, but has passed over out of death into life. In most solemn truth I tell you that a time is coming, nay, has already come, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear it will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, so he has also given to the Son to have life in himself, and he has conferred on him authority to act as judge, because he is the Son of Man. Wonder not at this, for a time is coming when all who are in the graves will hear his voice and will come forth, they who have done what is right to the resurrection of life, and they whose actions have been evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can of my own self do nothing. As I am bidden, so I judge. And mine is a just judgment, because it is not my own will that guides me, but the will of him who sent me. If I give testimony concerning myself, my testimony cannot be accepted. There is another who gives testimony concerning me, and I know that the testimony is true which he offers concerning me. 
you sent to john and he both was and still is a witness to the truth but the testimony on my behalf which i accept is not from man though i say all this in order that you may be saved he was the lamp that burned and shone and for a time you were willing to be gladdened by his light but the testimony which i have is weightier than that of john for the work the father has assigned to me for me to bring it to completion the very work which i am doing affords testimony concerning me that the father has sent me and the father who sent me he has given testimony concerning me none of you have ever either heard his voice or seen what he is like nor have you his word dwelling within you for you refuse to believe him whom he has sent you search the scriptures because you suppose that in them you will find the life of the ages and it is those scriptures that yield testimony concerning me and yet you are unwilling to come to me that you may have life i do not accept glory from man but i know you well and i know that in your hearts you do not really love god i have come as my father's representative and you do not receive me if some one else comes representing only himself him you will receive how is it possible for you to believe while you receive glory from one another and have no desire for the glory that comes from the only god do not suppose that i will accuse you to the father there is one who accuses you namely moses on whom your hope rests for if you believe moses you would believe me for he wrote about me but if you disbelieve his writings how are you to believe my words chapter six after this jesus went away across the lake of galilee that is the lake of tiberias a vast multitude followed him because they witnessed the miracles on the sick which he was constantly performing then jesus went up the hill and sat there with his disciples the jewish festival the passover was at hand and when he looked round and saw an immense crowd coming towards him he said to philip where shall we buy bread for all these people to eat he said this to put philip to the test for he himself knew what he was going to do seven pounds worth of bread replied philip is not enough for them all to get even a scanty meal one of his disciples andrew simon peter's brother said to him there is a boy here with five barley loaves and a couple of fish but what is that among so many make the people sit down said jesus the ground was covered with thick grass so they sat down the adult men numbering about five thousand then jesus took the loaves and after giving thanks he distributed them to those who were resting on the ground and also the fish in like manner as much as they desired when all were fully satisfied he said to his disciples gather up the broken portions that remain over so that nothing be lost accordingly they gathered them up and with the fragments of the five barley loaves the broken portions that remained over after they had done eating they filled twelve baskets thereupon the people having seen the miracle he had performed said this is indeed the prophet who was to come into the world perceiving however that they were about to come and carry him off by force to make him a king jesus withdrew again up the hill alone by himself when evening came on his disciples went down to the lake there they got on board a boat and pushed off to cross the lake to capernaum by this time it had become dark and jesus had not yet joined them the lake also was getting rough because a strong wind was blowing when however they had rowed three or four miles they saw jesus walking on the water and coming near the boat they were terrified but he called to them it is i he said do not be afraid then they were willing to take him on board and in a moment the boat reached the shore at the point to which they were going next morning the crowd who were still standing about on the other side of the lake found that there had been but one small boat there and they had seen that jesus did not go on board with his disciples but that his disciples went away without him yet a number of small boats came from tiberius to the neighborhood of the place where they had eaten the bread after the lord had given thanks 
When, however, the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves also took boats and came to Capernaum to look for Jesus. So when they had crossed the lake and had found him, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you come here? In most solemn truth I tell you, replied Jesus, that you are searching for me not because you have seen miracles, but because you ate the loaves and had a hearty meal. Bestow your pains not on the food which perishes, but on the food that remains unto the life of the ages, that food which will be the Son of Man's gift to you, for on him the Father, God, has set his seal. What are we to do? they asked, in order to carry out the things that God requires. This, replied Jesus, is above all the thing that God requires, that you should be believers in him whom he has sent. What miracle, then, they asked, do you perform for us to see and become believers in you? What do you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread out of heaven to eat. In most solemn truth I tell you, replied Jesus, that Moses did not give you the bread out of heaven, but my Father is giving you the bread, the true bread out of heaven. For God's bread is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us that bread. I am the bread of life, replied Jesus. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never, never thirst. But it is as I have said to you, you have seen me and yet you do not believe. Every one whom the Father gives me will come to me, and him who comes to me I will never on any account drive away. For I have left heaven, and have come down to earth, not to seek my own pleasure, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that of all that he has given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it to life on the last day. For this is my Father's will, that every one who fixes his gaze on the Son of God and believes in him should have the life of the ages, and I will raise him to life on the last day. Now the Jews began to find fault about him because of his claiming to be the bread which came down out of heaven. They kept asking, Is not this man Joseph's son? Is he not Jesus, whose father and mother we know? What does he mean by now, saying, I have come down out of heaven? Do not thus find fault among yourselves, replied Jesus. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Then I will raise him to life on the last day. It stands written in the prophets, And they shall all of them be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. No one has ever seen the Father except him who is from God. He has seen the Father. In most solemn truth I tell you that he who believes has the life of the ages. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, and they died. Here is the bread that comes down out of heaven, that a man may eat it and not die. I am the living bread come down out of heaven. If a man eats this bread, he shall live for ever. Moreover, the bread which I will give is my flesh given for the life of the world. This led to an angry debate among the Jews. How can this man, they argued, give us his flesh to eat? In most solemn truth I tell you, said Jesus, that unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has the life of the ages, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in union with me, and I remain in union with him. As the ever-living Father has sent me, and I live because of the Father, so also he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down out of heaven. It is unlike that which your forefathers ate, for they ate and yet died. He who eats this bread shall live for ever. Jesus said all this in the synagogue while teaching at Capernaum. 
Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard it, said, This is hard to accept. Who can listen to such teaching? But knowing in himself that his disciples were dissatisfied about it, Jesus asked them, Does this seem incredible to you? What then if you were to see the Son of Man ascending again where he was before? It is the Spirit which gives life. The flesh confers no benefit whatever. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were that did not believe, and who it was that would betray him. So he added, That is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it be granted him by the Father. Thereupon many of his disciples left him and went away, and no longer associated with him. Jesus therefore appealed to the twelve. Will you go also? he asked. Master, replied Simon Peter, to whom shall we go? Your teachings tell us of the life of the ages, and we have come to believe and know that you are indeed the Holy One of God. Did I not choose you, the twelve? said Jesus. And even of you one is a devil. He alluded to Judas, the son of Simon the Iscariot, for he it was who, though one of the twelve, was afterwards to betray him. Chapter 7 After this Jesus moved from place to place in Galilee. He would not go about in Judea, because the Jews were seeking an opportunity to kill him. But the Jewish festival of the tent-pitching was approaching. So his brothers said to him, Leave these parts, and go into Judea, that not only we but your disciples also may witness the miracles which you perform, for no one acts in secret, desiring all the while to be himself known publicly. Since you are doing these things, show yourself openly to the world. For even his brothers were not believers in him. My time, replied Jesus, has not yet come, but for you any time is suitable. It is impossible for the world to hate you, but me it does hate, because I give testimony concerning it that its conduct is evil. As for you, go up to the festival. I do not now go up to this festival, because my time is not yet fully come. Such was his answer, and he remained in Galilee. When, however, his brothers had gone up to the festival, then he also went up, not openly, but as it were privately. Meanwhile the Jews at the festival were looking for him, and were inquiring, Where is he? Among the mass of the people there was much muttered debate about him. Some said, He is a good man. Others said, Not so. He is imposing on the people. Yet for fear of the Jews no one spoke out boldly about him. But when the festival was already half over, Jesus went up to the temple and commenced teaching. The Jews were astonished. How does this man know anything of books, they said, although he has never been at any of the schools? Jesus answered their question by saying, My teaching does not belong to me, but comes from him who sent me. If any one is willing to do his will, he shall know about the teaching, whether it is from God or originates with me. The man whose teaching originates with himself aims at his own glory. He who aims at the glory of him who sent him teaches the truth, and there is no deception in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet not a man of you obeys the law? Why do you want to kill me? You are possessed by a demon, replied the crowd. No one wants to kill you. One deed I have done, replied Jesus, and you are all full of wonder. Consider, therefore, Moses gave you the right of circumcision, not that it began with Moses, but with your earlier forefathers, and even on a Sabbath day you circumcise a child. If a child is circumcised even on a Sabbath day, are you bitter against me because I have restored a man to perfect health on a Sabbath day? Do not form superficial judgments, but form the judgments that are just. Some, however, of the people of Jerusalem said, Is not this the man they are wanting to kill? But here he is, speaking openly and boldly, and they say nothing to him. Can the rulers really have ascertained that this man is the Christ? And yet we know this man, and we know where he is from. But as for the Christ, when he comes, no one can tell where he is from. Jesus, therefore, while teaching in the temple, cried aloud, and said, Yes, you know me, and you know where I am from. 
and yet I have not come of my own accord, but there is one who has sent me, an authority indeed of whom you have no knowledge. I know him, because I came from him, and he sent me. On hearing this, they wanted to arrest him, yet not a hand was laid on him, because his time had not yet come. But from among the crowd a large number believed in him. When the Christ comes, they said, will he perform more miracles than this teacher has performed? The Pharisees heard the people thus expressing their various doubts about him, and the high priests and the Pharisees sent some officers to apprehend him. So Jesus said, Still for a short time I am with you, and then I go my way to him who sent me. You will look for me and will not find me, and where I am you cannot come. The Jews therefore said to one another, Where is he about to betake himself so that we shall not find him? Will he betake himself to the dispersion among the Gentiles, and teach the Gentiles? What do those words of his mean, You will look for me, but will not find me, and where I am you cannot come? On the last day of the festival, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried aloud, Whoever is thirsty, he said, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, from within him, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water shall flow he referred to the spirit which those who believed in him were to receive for the spirit was not bestowed as yet because jesus had not yet been glorified after listening to these discourses some of the crowd began to say this is beyond doubt the prophet others said he is the christ but others again not so for is the christ to come from galilee has not the scripture declared that the Christ is to come of the family of David and from Bethlehem, David's village? So there was a violent dissension among the people on his account. Some of them wanted at once to arrest him, but no one laid hands upon him. Meanwhile the officers returned to the high priests and Pharisees, who asked them, Why have you not brought him? No mere man has ever spoken as this man speaks, said the officers. Are you deluded too? replied the Pharisees. Has any one of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed in him? But this rabble who understand nothing about the law are accursed. Nicodemus interposed, he who had formerly gone to Jesus, being himself one of them. Does our law, he asked, judge a man without first hearing what he has to say, and ascertaining what his conduct is? Do you also come from Galilee? they asked in reply. Search and see for yourself that no prophet is of Galilean origin. So they went away to their several homes. Chapter 8 But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At break of day, however, he returned to the temple, and there the people came to him in crowds. He seated himself, and was teaching them when the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman who had been found committing adultery. They made her stand in the center of the court, and they put the case to him. Rabbi, they said, this woman has been found in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law Moses has ordered us to stone such women to death. But what do you say? They asked this in order to put him to the test, so that they might have some charge to bring against him. But Jesus leaned forward and began to write with his finger on the ground. When, however, they persisted with their question, he raised his head and said to them, Let the sinless man among you be the first to throw a stone at her. Then he leaned forward again, and again began to write on the ground. They listened to him, and then, beginning with the eldest, took their departure, one by one, till all were gone. And Jesus was left behind alone, and the woman in the center of the court. Then, raising his head, Jesus said to her, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she replied. And I do not condemn you either, said Jesus. Go, and from this time do not sin any more. Once more Jesus addressed them. I am the light of the world, he said. The man who follows me shall certainly not walk in the dark, but shall have the light of life. You are giving testimony about yourself, said the Pharisees. Your testimony is not true. 
even if i am giving testimony about myself replied jesus my testimony is true for i know where i come from and where i am going but you know neither of these two things you judge according to appearances i am judging no one and even if i do judge my judgment is just for i am not alone but the father who sent me is with me in your own law too it is written that the testimony of two men is true i am one giving testimony about myself and the father who sent me gives testimony about me where is your father they asked you know my father as little as you know me he replied if you knew me you would know my father also these sayings he uttered in the treasury while teaching in the temple yet no one arrested him because his time had not yet come again he said to them i am going away then you will try to find me but you will die in your sins where i am going it is impossible for you to come the jews began to ask one another is he going to kill himself do you think that he says where i am going it is impossible for you to come you he continued are from below i am from above you are of this present world i am not of this present world that is why i told you that you will die in your sins for unless you believe that i am he that is what will happen you who are you they asked how is it that i am speaking to you at all replied jesus many things i have to speak and to judge concerning you but he who sent me is true and the things which i have heard from him are those which i have come into the world to speak they did not perceive that he was speaking to them of the father so jesus added when you have lifted up the son of man then you will know that i am he of myself i do nothing but as the father has taught me so i speak and he who sent me is with me he has not left me alone for i do always what is pleasing to him as he thus spoke many became believers in him jesus therefore said to those of the jews who had now believed in him as for you if you hold fast to my teaching then you are truly my disciples and you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free we are descendants of abraham they answered and have never at any time been in slavery to any one what do those words of yours mean you shall become free in most solemn truth i tell you replied jesus that every one who commits sin is the slave of sin now a slave does not remain permanently in his master's house but a son does if then the son shall make you free you will be free indeed you are descendants of abraham i know but you want to kill me because my teaching gains no ground within you the words i speak are those i have learnt in the presence of the father therefore you also should do what you have heard from your father our father is abraham they said if you were abraham's children replied jesus it is abraham's deeds that you would be doing but in fact you are longing to kill me a man who has spoken to you the truth which i have heard from god abraham did not do that you are doing the deeds of your father we they replied are not illegitimate children we have one father namely god <laughs> if god were your father said jesus you would love me for it is from god that i came and i am now here i have not come of myself but he sent me how is it you do not understand me when i speak it is because you cannot bear to listen to my words the father whose sons you are is the devil and you desire to do what gives him pleasure he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand firm in the truth for there is no truth in him whenever he utters his lie he utters it out of his own store for he is a liar and the father of lies but because i speak the truth you do not believe me which of you convicts me of sin if i speak the truth why do you not believe me he who is a child of god listens to god's words you do not listen to them and why it is because you are not god's children are we not right answered the jews in saying that you are a samaritan and are possessed by a demon i am not possessed by a demon replied jesus on the contrary i honor my father and you dishonor me 
I, however, am not aiming at glory for myself. There is one who aims at glory for me, and who judges. In most solemn truth I tell you that if any one shall have obeyed my teaching, he shall in no case ever see death. Now, exclaimed the Jews, we know that you are possessed by a demon. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. And yet you say, if any one shall have obeyed my teaching, he shall in no case ever taste death. Are you really greater than our forefather Abraham? For he died, and the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Were I to glorify myself, answered Jesus, I should have no real glory. There is one who glorifies me, namely my father, who you say is your God. You do not know him, but I know him perfectly. And were I to deny my knowledge of him, I should resemble you and be a liar. On the contrary, I do know him, and I obey his commands. Abraham your forefather exulted in the hope of seeing my day, and he saw it, and was glad. You are not yet fifty years old, cried the Jews, and have you seen Abraham? In most solemn truth, answered Jesus, I tell you that before Abraham came into existence, I am Thereupon they took up stones with which to stone him, but he hid himself, and went away out of the temple. CHAPTER Nine. As he passed by, he saw a man who had been blind from his birth. So his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither he nor his parents sinned, answered Jesus but he was born blind in order that God's mercy might be openly shown in him. We must do the works of him who sent me while there is daylight. Night is coming on, when no one can work. When I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After thus speaking, he spat on the ground, and then, kneading the dust and spittle into clay, he smeared the clay over the man's eyes, and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, the name means sent. So he went and washed his eyes, and returned, able to see. His neighbors, therefore, and the other people to whom he had been a familiar object because he was a beggar, began asking, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Yes, it is, replied some of them. No, it is not, said others, but he is like him. His own statement was, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened? they asked. He whose name is Jesus, he answered, made clay and smeared my eyes with it, and then told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and obtained sight. Where is he? they inquired. But the man did not know. They brought him to the Pharisees, the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus made the clay and opened the man's eyes was the Sabbath. So the Pharisees renewed their questioning as to how he had obtained his sight. "'He put clay on my eyes,' he replied, "'and I washed, and now I can see.' This led some of the Pharisees to say, "'That man has not come from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath.' "'How is it possible for a bad man to do such miracles?' argued others. And there was a division among them. So again they asked the once blind man, "'What is your account of him?' for he opened your eyes. He is a prophet, he replied. The Jews, however, did not believe the statement concerning him, that he had been blind and had obtained his sight, until they called his parents and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How is it then that he can now see? We know, replied the parents, that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But how it is that he can now see, or who has opened his eyes, we do not know. Ask him himself. He is of full age. He himself will give his own account of it. Such was their answer, because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already settled among themselves that if any one should acknowledge Jesus as the Christ, he should be excluded from the synagogue. That was why his parents said, He is of full age. Ask him himself. A second time, therefore, they called the man who had been blind, and said, Give God the praise. We know that that man is a sinner. Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know, he replied. 
one thing I know, that I was once blind, and that now I can see. What did he do to you? they asked. How did he open your eyes? I have told you already, he replied, and you did not listen to me. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also mean to be disciples of his? Then they railed at him and said, You are that man's disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we do not know where he comes from. <laughs> Why, this is marvelous, the man replied. <laughs> you do not know where he comes from, and yet he has opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to bad people, but that if any one is a God-fearing man and obeys him, to him he listens. From the beginning of the world such a thing was never heard of as that any one should open the eyes of a man blind from his birth. Had that man not come from God, he could have done nothing. You, they replied, were wholly begotten and born in sin. And do you teach us? And they put him out of the synagogue. Jesus heard that they had done this, so having found him, he asked him, Do you believe in the Son of God? Who is he, sir? replied the man. Tell me, so that I may believe in him. You have seen him, said Jesus, and not only so, he is now speaking to you. I believe, sir, he said, and he threw himself at his feet. I came into this world, said Jesus, to judge men, that those who do not see may see, and that those who do see may become blind. These words were heard by those of the Pharisees who were present, and they asked him, Are we also blind? If you were blind, answered Jesus, you would have no sin, but as a matter of fact you boast that you see, so your sin remains. The end of chapters 5 through 9 of the Gospel according to John. Recording by Mark Penfold.